This is the sound of a baby's beating heart in its mother's womb. But for around 48.5 million women around the world, this is a sound they may never hear. So many couples dream of becoming parents, but many still face a life of childlessness. Over the last 35 years, around 5 million babies have been born since the creation of in vitro fertilisation treatment. For Tiffany Maul and her husband Lee, they weren't even sure if they had any fertility problems. When we went, they, they said that sometimes it can just take time, so at first we thought, oh, it's just normal. And then they did, they sent us to a clinic to get tested, and then they said that, um, that we would have problems getting pregnant and that it wasn't like normal. So then we had to start the investigative procedure at the clinic and then that, they said that we needed to do the IVF. We're constantly on edge thinking about it. It was hard because it was such a long process doing all the injections. It was hard to think of anything else every day because you're constantly, even if you try and forget about it, because it goes on for months, so you can't, you can't ever switch off because there's always an alarm going off on your phone saying it's injection time. You know what it's for, so you're always thinking about a baby. The NHS have found that on average the success rates for under 35 year old women is over 32%, and just under 28% for women between 35 and 37. This continues to drop the older the age groups get, finally showing under 2% success with women over 44. With a financial toll at around £5,000 a go and the low success rates, it's not a risk that everyone is willing to take. Colleen Lynch from the Care Fertility Nottingham Clinic says every couple is different. Well, there are factors within the embryo and factors within the woman that, um, that impact on whether a, that embryo is capable of implanting and creating a pregnancy and from the woman's side you know is the uterine environment capable of set, accepting an embryo and in, allowing that implantation process um, so whether you know we're ever going to get to a sort of 100% success rate or something like that not, not at this point certainly you know like I said at the minute we're at the stage where you know, we can look at all of your embryos and we can say this one has the best chance of implantation. Sometimes when we're doing something more in depth, like actual genetic testing of the embryos, we can be turning around and saying none of your embryos have a chance. So we're not actually able to put people in the position where they will definitely produce viable embryos that will create pregnancies. Whether that's something we'll be able to do in the future, um, I don't know, but it would be very nice to think that we could. After an emotional battle for Tiffany and her husband, she finally got the news she was hoping for after just one round of IVF. She was pregnant. But now new fears were surfacing of it all falling apart at the last hurdle. I thought once you got pregnant it'd be really easy. Like it just, you're just pregnant, like you just feel fat and gross but it's fine. But it's really stressful because you're really worried all the time that something's going to go wrong. Just a bit pessimistic but... You see, you're constantly stressed and looking for problems, and, and it's quite hard. But not everyone is as lucky as Tiffany. It took Leslie Pine 10 years to be able to talk openly about her infertility after six rounds of IVF. She now runs her own website to help women cope through this difficult time. Although you go, when you go to the hospital, the other people there, you, people tend not to talk, or that didn't talk to you, talk to each other, um, and just you feel like it's just you in the world, completely out. And you feel that there's something wrong with you. You don't know, I mean, for us, it was unexplained. Um, and, but still, having babies is something that so many people in the world seem to be able to do without any, any problem at all. And you just feel like there's something completely wrong with you that, you know, then you don't know what it is. So certainly, then there was no no help, no support, nothing at all. So it's it and it's a complete roller coaster, and you you just left feeling that it's only you in the world who hasn't succeeded. Leslie and her friend Jessica are now there to support women through the IVF roller coaster. Jessica went on to write a book about her experiences and how she dealt with the loss. It's about my journey to try and have my own biological baby, um, which has 
been a very long and at times heartbreaking one. Um, it's involved 11 rounds of IVF, um, which is at the extreme end of the spectrum. Um, but one of the reasons for that, in fact the main reason, is that we've been through many miscarriages and also an ectopic pregnancy which was very dangerous. Um, so we, and doctors kept saying if you keep trying um, you will get pregnant because obviously it was a very good sign that we could get pregnant, um, which is why we continued. But um, sadly at the end of the book um, and now um, it still hasn't resulted in what I've been working so hard to achieve, which is a baby. Uh, it's a terrible thing to say, but you know, illnesses like cancer, which are terrible, are, are in a way more socially acceptable now. You know, that in the way that perhaps they weren't, you know, several decades ago. But if you go to work and say, you know, I, I, I've been, I've got breast cancer, for example, everyone totally understands and sympathises with that, and you would take the time off. And um, whereas I think, I think possibly, I mean, I, I'm. I'm tentative here because I've thankfully never experienced um, that uh, illness, but I think possibly with infertility, it's less socially acceptable. Particularly as, you know, um, well, you're not going to die from it. And anyway, you know, what, what right do you have to have a baby? You know, there are plenty, there are far too many children in the world. You know, just get over it. Do you, do you know what I mean? Although these ladies felt that there was no support for them, every clinic is different. The Care Fertility Nottingham Clinic has a counsellor on hand to talk to patients and guide them through what isn't seen on the outside as a major life trauma. Likewise, I don't think miscarriage is given you know, the um, understanding or sensitivity that it should. It's an intense grief. It's it's not a, a grief that society enables them to grieve for. I mean, there's no ritual, there's no you know, ability to say goodbye. Statistically, I read that a, a couple or a person going through an IVF treatment will experience more grief within that fertility journey than another couple would in the whole of their life. And that's really significant. So within that, there is the reactionary depression, you know, of, of experiencing that intense grief. Also the fact that society wouldn't deem it as grief and therefore impacts on their job. And, you know, which can lead to all sorts of, you know, depressive symptoms, anxiety. And it's really, really difficult for, you know, the people going through these treatments. Baby. Tiffany Maul is one of the lucky ones, as after three years of trying to have her own child, she finally gave birth to a healthy baby boy named Alfred. Many others will never feel that joy, because for every miracle baby, there are thousands of women silently dealing with the pain of failed IVF treatment.